Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover two important uh, regression metrics and we call them R-square and adjusted R-square. Let's recap what we have done in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we covered just a quick overview of regression metrics, how to assess the model by simply calculating the error uh, or the residuals between the, what the model is predicting, which is what we call it Y estimated or predicted, and the actual value YI. And afterwards, we have been able to calculate the mean absolute error, mean square error, root mean square error, mean absolute percentage error, and mean percentage error as well. In this lecture, we're going to cover an important metric, which is what we call it R square. So R square, or the coefficient of determination, represents the proportion of variance of Y that has been explained by the independent variables in the model, X. All right, what does this mean? Let's take a look at a practical example. Let's assume that we have here our ice cream cart, and let's assume that we have our temperature and revenue. Uh, we plotted all the data points, and we came up with this linear model. If we go ahead and calculated R square, okay, and we let's say came up with an R square equals to 80, okay, what does this mean? This means that 80% of the increase in the ice cream cart revenue is due to the increase in temperature. And that's very, very important element. So now, basically, here I've selected only one independent variable temperature, and I, I'm tracking the revenue changes. As I change the temperature, the revenue will change, right? And what R squared can give me, can give me kind of an insight, okay, of, okay, how, when I say R squared equal, R squared equal 80, that means, okay, uh, any change within the temperature okay, will have an impact on the revenue, right? So when I say that R squared equals to 80, that means 80% 80 of any increase in the revenue is due to the temperature, is due to that specific independent variable temperature, okay? So R squared can simply range from zero up to 100%, or from zero to one per se, okay? And that's the overall kind of idea of, um, of R squared. Let's take a look at a little bit more details. So R squared represents the proportion of variance of the dependent variable Y that has been explained by the independent variable uh, X. R squared simply provides an insight of the goodness of the fit. How, how good is my fit? And that's very important, the next point. It gives me a measure of how well unseen samples are likely to be predicted by the model through what we call the proportion of explained variance. So again, as I mentioned before, uh, let's take a look at again at, at, at a specific example. And let's assume that we have, uh, again, the, our temperature and revenue. If R squared equal, equals to 80, that means 80% 80 of any increase of the revenue is due to the increase in temperature. What if we have, for example, let's say an, a model that has an R squared equals to zero. Okay, what does this mean? That means basically it's a constant model. Okay, it's basically in a way useless model. This model will always predict the expected value of Y disregarding the input features. Why? Because R squared equals to zero. That means the, any increase in the output has nothing to do with the, with the independent variable X. Okay? So the next question is, okay, how can I calculate R squared? R squared equals to one minus summation of each point, the true label YI, minus the Y hat or Y estimated squared and we're going to divide it by yi minus the mean and overall square as well, and we'll sum them up, sum up all the data points. And don't worry about it. We're not going to use R square in pretty much any of our um, calculations. We're going to use scikit-learn in Python to do all the magic for us. We're just going to call R2 square, and it will just going to calculate it for us, and it will look pretty good. And again, the most important idea here or concept is to just get an overview of what do we mean by R square. Obviously, we would love to have 100% R square. We would love to have that. If we come up with 80 or 90, again, that's pretty acceptable. But we don't want to see a model that has, let's say, R square of 20%. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything. That means it's it's an issue. There's an error here. All right. So let's take a look at the adjusted R square. So if R square equals to 80, for example, as we mentioned before, this means that 80% of the increase in ice cream cart revenue is due to the increase in temperature. 
So let's assume that I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and add maybe another useless independent variable. Let's assume that, you know, ice cream reven revenue is function of temperature and it's also, also function of, let's say, the level of education of the worker, whoever is working on the ice cream cart, which doesn't make much sense, okay, because, again, you know, it, like education doesn't mean much in there. So let's take a look at, um, at the graph. So as you guys can see here, now I have my temperature, I have my revenue, I got that model, everything looks good, and R squared was equals to 80. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add here another axis. So this is X. This is my Z value now, or Z axis now. Here I added another parameter or another independent variable, Y, and I call it education of worker. Okay? And what you guys can see in general is that when you add an additional independent variable, in general, you will find that R square goes up. It increases. So the more independent variables you add, you will find that R square will go up as well. So now R square increases and become R square equals to, let's say, 85%. So you will say, oh, wow, that's amazing. Let's add additional independent variables. So the more independent variables you add, you might say, wow, the, that's amazing. R squares are, R squares are going up. Unfortunately, okay, some of these parameters might be, it might be useless, like this one, education of workers. It has nothing to do with the revenue, okay? So, and that's why we calculate what we call it adjusted R square. So, as I mentioned, one limitation of R square is that it increases by adding independent variables to the model, which is misleading, since some added variables might be useless. Like, you know, in our example, our number, uh, our level of education of the worker. So if they have, when I say useless, that means they have minimal significance. Okay? So adjusted R square overcome, overcomes this issue by adding kind of a penalty. If we try to add an independent variable that does not improve the model. So if I added an additional parameter and that parameter does not improve my model, okay? we are going to penalize it. And that's why we're just going to think of it as, you know, like the gain that came out of this independent variable addition have to outweigh the, um, the, uh, the impact that we actually added an additional independent parameter. And that's why you will find that the R adjusted or adjusted R square is kind of a, a little bit of a modification or a modified version of R square. So first, we're going to add R square and then we're going to make a little bit of modification to it. And let's take a look at the equation. R square adjusted equals two one minus one minus R square multiplied by N minus one divided by N minus K minus one, where K is the number of independent variables, okay? And N is the number of samples. Simply put, the overall equation says, as you increase the number of independent variables, so as you increase K, okay? Uh, basically, we're just going to add uh, kind of a penalty to it. We're just going to divide by that number in here, okay? That's the overall idea is that the increase in R square has to outweigh the increase in the number of K or the additional parameters that we add. And that's where the adjusted came into play. If we add useless predictors to the model, adjusted R square will decrease. It will go down, okay? If, if, the, if the added parameters does not make any difference, then we're just going to be forcing K to go up. That's all what it is. And if useless predictors are added to the model, adjusted R square will increase. Um, my apologies. If useful predictors are added to the model, adjusted R square will go up. Okay. If, we, if that independent variable actually improve R square, okay, so you'll find that the R adjusted will actually go up because the improvement coming out from R square improvement will overweigh or will overcome the increase in the number of parameters or independent parameters k. All right. Okay. And that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the, um, in the upcoming case studies, what we're going to do is that we're going to apply all these regression metrics, such as RMSE, MSE, MAE, R square, adjusted R square, to our to pretty much every single example and assess and compare them. And that's all what I have. Best of luck. And I'll see you guys in the next lecture.